happy today with huge Labor Day deals right now at Lowe's. Like three select shrubs for only $12. Offer valid 24 through 831 while supplies last. Actual plant size and variety in store may vary. One year plant guarantee applies to select plants. Requires receiving plants to be replaced. Discount taken at time of purchase excludes Alaska and Hawaii. Done with the hassles and surprises of your checking account? Then check out Simply Right Checking from Santander Bank. Click the banner or visit SantanderBank.com slash simple for more information. With Simply Right Checking from Santander Bank, you're all right. Santander Bank, NA, member FDIC. Using an overpriced trash bag? Pricey, pricey, pricey! A bag that breaks? Whippy, whippy, whippy! Or a smelly bag? Stinky, stinky, stinky! Time to switch to new Hefty Ultra Strong Trash Bags. Now for a new low price. Hefty, hefty, hefty! They're our best bags yet, with Arm & Hammer odor control, and they cost less than glad, so you'll be... Happy, happy, happy! Ultra Strength, Ultra Savings. New Hefty Ultra Strong, all oh for a new low price. Hefty, hefty, hefty! Some of you think it takes too long to drive the Buffalo Wild Wings, order lunch, eat, and get back to work in time. It's because of people like you that we've got the B-Dubs Fast Break Lunch Menu. We guarantee you'll get an entree like wings or street tacos, plus a side delivered to your table in just 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> if you just wish we could serve lunch faster, now you might wish we were slower. Most of all wild ones, wings, beer, sports. For a limited time only at participating locations, restrictions apply. See participating locations for details. Sure, you're on Google Plus, but is your circle complete? It isn't if you're not following WEI. You're all about instant coverage of the Sox, Pats, P's, and C's, right? Well, head to WEI.com slash Google, and you'll get the most up-to-date coverage and info about yeah, it's a Google Google. sports. Plus, you can lock in on exclusive Google Hangouts with WEI personalities. And who doesn't want to do the hang thing with those guys? WEI.com slash Google. One click, and the circle is complete. New England Sports 24-7 at WEI.com slash Google. Way before first pitch and long after John Farrell's press conference, Sports Radio WEEI submits its status as the home for Red Sox baseball. Mornings with DNC. With Minahan. Six man rotation and he's not even. He's in Pawtucket. Middays with Ordway, Merloni, and Fourier. I think four and all with like a one eight in his last four starts. Or afternoons with Dale and Holly with Thornton. Do they embrace that? Get even younger? 24 7 coverage of the Sox. And of course, Josie and Tim Neverett with the play by play. Sox baseball here on Sports Radio WEEI. The drive home is just better with Dale Arnold, Michael Holly, Sherry Thornton. Afternoons with Dale and Holly with Thornton. I don't know if uh, John Farrell did it. I would have. If it's that important to you, if you feel like, oh man, this is not good for me right now. This is going to affect. Where's the puppies? It's going to affect the way the fan base looks at me. I don't really want to deal with this right now. What was wrong with his approach of just saying, my my personal life is my personal life, right? I mean, perfect, that, so, in other words, if, if Bill Belichick were John Farrell. Good luck getting... Shut him down. Oh, you're yeah. like getting something out of that, right? Sure. Shut him hey, down, shut him down. And, and like the Sandoval thing, as much as we get frustrated by the way the Patriots handle things, it works for them. They wouldn't even... If the, Belichick wouldn't have said as much about a player's shoulder exam, he would just say, when the medical people say he's all set, he's all set. And he would just glare at somebody who asked about his personal life. Appointment listening in New England. Dale and Holly with Thornton. Weekdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on Sports Radio. W-E-E-I. Hey! Back on the track, turns and makes the over the yeah. catch. Everything socks is found here. Sports Radio 93.7, WEEI-FM and HD1. Lawrence Boston, now from St. Light Auto Glass. A WEEI trending now. Here's what's trending now on WEEI and WEEI.com. Preseason game number three for the past. They were down in Carolina, beat the Panthers 19-17. Tom Brady playing his first preseason game entered the first quarter, entered the game in the first quarter, completed a 37-yard pass to Aaron Dobson, which led to a field goal. Second drive through a 33-yard touchdown pass to perfection. Chris Hogan bringing the lead to 9-0. Patriots uh, hang on in the second half to win. Jimmy G, however, did not look as sharp as he did against the Bears. Uh, we shall see what happens in the final preseason game. That will be against the Giants at MetLife Stadium next Thursday at 7 o'clock. Red Sox saw Stephen Wright taking to the hill for the first time in three weeks. Not a particularly good return. Wright gives up five runs in the first inning. Red Sox go to the Royals. Six to three. David Price taking to the mound. Looking to turn it around tonight against Danny Duffy of the Royals. And they'll face off uh, tonight at Fenway, as I said. 7-10 pregame starting at 625 on the WEEI Red Sox radio network. Weather today, high of 82 right now, 75. 
Hey, and don't forget to tune in to the 15th annual WEI Nesson Jimmy Fon Radio Telethon, presented by the Arbella Insurance Foundation this Monday and Tuesday. Bruins owner Charlie Jacobs will join Ordway, Maloney, and Poirier Tuesday at 1130. That's what's trending now on WEI and WEI.com. The preacher and the teacher. Mustard and Johnson. It's Mustard and Johnson on the WEI Sports Radio Network. Talk all things Sox, Pats, C's, and C's. Right now with Mustard and Johnson on the WEI Sports Radio Network. WEI.com. Hour number two, Mustard and Johnson. Working our way toward noon. Taking your Where's Bobo? 617 779-7937. All eyes, of course, on the Pats last night. And I guess alternately on the Red Sox going back and forth. Red Sox coming home for the first time in a long time after uh, a long road trip where they stayed above 500. They lost their third straight game. Uh, it was uh, usually the bullpen has been the cause of many of the problems for the Red Sox, Larry. Uh, over the course of this season. Stephen Wright has totally been an issue, but you could almost anticipate Wright coming back after spending three weeks on the DL. He is a knuckleball pitcher. Uh, he is taking on a very disciplined uh, team in Kansas City that's just starting to find its groove for the first time after winning the World Series. It was something you almost expected to happen. It did. Royal scored the five runs in the first inning. They go on. Uh, to win the game at Red Sox, as I said, lose their third straight. Meanwhile, three straight wins for the Patriots in the preseason. Tom Brady getting four series, throwing the touchdown. Uh, Hogan uh, and Jimmy G not looking good. So those are the two topics on the table. Are you worried at all? John was kind of, uh, uh, I mean, John is a Yankee fan from Malden, saying the Red Sox would fall apart over these last five or six weeks of the regular season with all the road games and not even make the playoffs. Do you really anticipate that scenario? Well, I don't. I, I, again, at some point, Greg, you do have to look at the statistics. Easy for you to say. S- statistics. Or as they say in Indiana, as Letterman used to say, statistics. <laughs> and look and see how some of these guys are taking a precipitous drop. And uh, what really disturbs me is they have 927 men left on base. There's 35 uh, more players left on base than anybody else in the American League. And I think that, that it's... Last night was the perfect case in point. Bradley comes up, the bases are loaded, and, and he grounds out or strikes out. And then he comes up again with two men on base, and he, uh, and, he and he's out. And you can't... He's in a critical position. He's batting six, and you're not getting anything out of him right now. He's one of my favorite players, but I'm very concerned uh, with him. And and I think that, you know, the problem with them is they don't. They need maybe bring one Carter up. I don't know. But right now, uh, that Ben Attendee injury did not help any, because he was helping to produce for them and giving them some some punch in the lineup. But right now, I told you it's a National League lineup. Can you add that to the fact, this is what made last night's game so uh, frustrating, is pretty much when you when you clicked over and you saw they were losing like 5-1 to one for the, and the innings kept going by and they kept leaving people on base, it was inevitable that they don't have the kind of lineup now that they can go out and, and recover from that. And that was obvious to me. And they haven't really been a team for all their success. And you'd have to say this has been a very good year, particularly in context. Last two seasons, they ended up in the last place. Uh, and they've been in a wild card or in the division hunt for all season long. But what they don't have is that comeback ability that had in seasons past when they were really good. Like 2013, no lead was ever saved for the Red Sox. They always came back, always seemed that way. Because the bottom of my line right. has dropped off. After Ramirez, and he's even even Ramirez is shaky. I mean, he's hitting 275, and he's got 16 home runs and the like. So he's okay. But after that, Bradley, Shaw, and Leon, and the rest of them, it's, it, it, you're not getting anything out of that. So you get about four players that are not producing at all. And Bogarts has not had a, a terrific August, to say the 308, least. 308, he's got like 15 yeah, but his right. numbers have dipped tremendously. Oh, oh he's yeah. another one who's yeah. on the way down. Right. Not, not, again, in fairness to them, and I don't want to use it as an excuse, but that travel must just suck the life out of you. And it's just, and, and they do look tired. It, this is the case in point where you wish you had some players you could plug in 
Like, I'd like to give Bradley about two or three days off. I really would. But I don't know how you're going to do that. And with the Benintendi injury, uh, there goes another outfielder in a position where you had depth before and you could use him. So, and I asked the question again, and I think you've analyzed the team uh, very concisely and ins insightfully. Is this team capable of uh, falling out of the wild card hunt and not even yes. making a playoff? Oh, spot? yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think, now, ironically enough, I think they finally have solidified the starting rotation. Price is pitching much better, right? Just last night, it's just, probably a just rush. The Pacello is all right. Uh, all right. <laughs> No, I mean he. I mean the last, the right. last time yeah. he gave up a home yeah. run, but I mean yeah. he's still he's he's been really good. I'm very uh, ple uh, surprised and impressed with him. Um, uh, uh, Rodriguez coming back and pitching. He, he seems to have recovered from the groin injury, whatever that he had. And it is. Um, they seem to be solidified in that area. They move. They move Buckles back to the bullpen, which I think is a good move. I think he's finding himself, and maybe he could be that eighth inning pitcher. I don't know uh, what his, where his head is. With that, whether he minds getting moved back to the bullpen or not, I don't know. I think in fairness to him, he's done everything they've asked him to do, and he's come back nicely. But it still does not take away the fact that if you have bullpen problems and the bottom part of your lineup, Craig, is not producing, that's a problem. On the other hand, Baltimore got... Uh, crushed by the Yankees last night. They're not playing great baseball. Blue Jays have been up and down, and we pointed this out several times over the course of the summer. It's not as if the rest of the ALE is some sort of a powerhouse division. Yeah, there are four teams over 500. But, you know, it's anybody's division. No yeah, it's one's almost like away nobody, with that. It's almost like yeah. nobody wants it. Yeah, yeah. In fact, they keep... Nobody's pulling out. No. Let me put it that way. Nobody's pulling out ahead by any means. So, I mean, the Red Sox are game back, and... Uh, Baltimore's two back. The Yankees are five and a half back. Uh, I'm impressed with the Yankees. I like what they're doing. Well, they got rid of the, uh, a lot of the old baggage, and a lot of the veteran players are gone. I think A-Rod leaving the team has certainly uh, relieved a lot of the pressure. And they're just playing loose, and they, there's nothing to worry about. They're, they're, they're really, they were sellers, as, as we were talking about earlier, uh, at, at the July they were, 31st they were trade smart deadline. to do that. And they were smart to do it, and they're, and they're playing with no pressure at all. And if I'm a Yankee fan right now, I'm in, I, I like my team. I like well, the fact, no, no, wait a minute. I like the fact that they're still competitive, that's all. I mean, if, it, if they fell off the radar screen or something, that would be a totally different story. But they haven't, and they've stayed competitive. And if you can sell off and start to rebuild and still remain competitive, uh, you should feel pretty good about your team. You can't win every year. Well, and one of the things the Yankees have managed to do, even though they haven't won uh, many more in the century, depending on your uh, perspective on the calendar, uh, they're always above 500. They never sink into the cellar the way the Red Sox do, and you have to wonder what's the better strategy. Red Sox have fallen out of playoff spots, have uh, been mired in last place, yet still managed to win three World Series. Well, they got a young team right now, too, right. the Red Sox. They, people keep forgetting that. I think they got the nucleus of their team of these young kids coming up, so I think that bodes well for them. So they no, there's a talented team there, Larry, and you pointed out their starting pitching is as good as anybody's right now in the American League. I think statistically, Red Sox have the third best starting pitching since the All-Star break. The bullpen has obviously been an issue. Uh, Farrell's management of the bullpen, even bigger issue. Well, he's had a couple of major moves that putting right out to, to base run against the Dodgers. This is in hindsight. That was ridiculous to do that. And, and he's had a couple of others. But that's not the reason there. You can't blame him for the bottom half of the lineup not hitting. You, you can't blame him for that. That's just plain. The players have to take some responsibility in this. All I can say is uh, you really, watching Kansas City last night and their capability and going to two straight World Series, and they're only a couple games out of a wild card now, you wouldn't want to end up in a wild card scenario against Kansas City. That's all I can no. say. That, no. I don't care if it's home or away. You don't want to play Kansas yeah. City. In but the they've got to get back on track with the, the bottom part of the lineup, Craig. You can't get after Hanley Ramirez is, is 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 out or whatever. Then you go down from there, and it's and it seems like all these things happen, and then you get key players like Bradley and Shaw and the like 
up at the plate with a couple of men on base and, and to watch these guys keep getting out it's a killer it's a it's a killer for the inning uh if you're the crowd it's a killer it's just it, it's a bad, they're in a bad state right now with that and i don't know what you can do to fix it if these guys are just playing uh running on fumes i don't know yeah tough to have a the athlete really like right. a ball in tall grass right well now. and we've seen that i mean he's had some wild swings the pendulum goes from one end to the other with uh jackie bradley you could tell last night i don't know there was two men on or whatever he came up in man he looked like he wanted to be any place was there and that's not the attitude you want you got to come out there with confidence and the like Going back to the Patriots for a second as well, because we're talking about both subjects. Um, do they have any, what do you feel they have for, for question marks left as they approach I don't think they, I, you know, I don't want to sound like this overly confident fanboy, but based on what I saw last night, Brady will be Brady when he returns. But that's not for a while. Okay, well, can I finish my, my analysis? No. Please? Thank you. Okay, I think they're going to be fine if Brady said. I've been saying all along, I look at three and one. Uh, they're going to lose one game. Well, what have you seen from Garoppolo? Garoppolo it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're Football's still the here. Games where he's very familiar with the territory. He's comfortable in those surroundings. So you're surrendering the Arizona game already? Yes, I am. 